destination. We all have destinations. The people take care of each other around here. They're all similar. A start that reaches an end. It's a very, very tight-knit, uh, loving community. Yet, no two journeys are the same. It's just a spot, and any time I go by it, I always, I always say a prayer. In the small Colorado mountain town of Gunnison, I can't stress enough what this did to the whole community. Theirs is one many take to a football game. Friday Night Lights is probably one of the best things that ever happened to this town. But 50 years ago, a high school football bus full of boys from a destination town never reached theirs. Well, it was one of those, you know, crisp fall mornings. Uh, you know, blue sky, leaves returning. And you know, we're all excited. Everybody's in their uh, sport coats and ties. You know, it was our travel uniform. So having a, a really good time on the bus, you know, getting uh, up the pass uh, before things started to turn south. Sometimes I wake up in the night and I still think about the bus. On September 11th, 1971. We just started you know, our, our wild ride down the pass, uh, which the only thing I can assimilate it to is riding a roller coaster at Elish Gardens. You know, just you no know, control and flying from one side to the other. You were thrown from your seat, so you, you're in your seat, and then when it rotated, it threw you out of your seat and you could feel being, being tight and squashed and then released and then tight and squashed and then released. A junior varsity's bus trip over Monarch Pass to Salida changed the town of Gunnison forever. Well, I, I was obviously knocked unconscious and I remember waking up with a, a body on top of me. It was right here, where after sliding off the road, going over 60 miles per hour, rolling over two and a half times, that the bus landed upside down with its roof caved in. One was hanging in a tree. One was uh, sitting beside the bus. The coach, Larry Halser, was uh, leaning up against the bus, and he was, uh, I think he had nine broken bones in his back. Uh, it was an overwhelming thing. A brake failure in the school bus led to devastation. The next memory that I have, I am standing outside the bus in the middle of a war zone. Eight underclassmen and a 28-year-old coach died, leaving the town and the survivors of the accident I remember what it looked like that day of that scene, and I'm not gonna ever forget that. It's just kind of grafted in there. It's not going anywhere. A focal point of history they never wanted a part of. Obviously, uh, very grateful uh, to be alive, uh, but man, oh man, the, excuse me, I walked away where, you know, for something that, you know, killed people and maimed and critically hurt dozens of others. So, uh, obviously a lot of survivors guilt, you know, why my friend died and I lived and then having to face their parents and their sisters and brothers, you know, it, it's, it's a heavy burden to carry. Steve's best three friends were killed that day and he was sitting in the middle of all three of them. For years, the tragedy wasn't really talked about. You know, we were really of the age of, you know, just suck it up and, and move forward. And 
that's what we did. And once it started rotating like that, it was kind of a mixed up jar of beans. But as time has passed, the town has made an effort to keep the memories of those lost alive. I had parents that said, you know, I just don't want my son forgotten. The jerseys are a nice uh, memorial for them, and uh, I'm glad that it keeps their memory alive. Uh, and it's almost like a flag for me. I just want to salute it. For the people of Gunnison, it's been a 50-year journey. Ugh. So good to see you. Of healing. The kids are all buried together at the cemetery. I focus on remembering uh, more how we lived than how they died. Most of us have long since left. This is always home. No matter where they are. One, two, three! Cowboys! We have to remind these kids that these people died. And yes, they are forever cowboys. Mm -hmm.